I love my cozy, warm new scarf, but even better, I love that it has a hidden secret. A pocket with a zipper right inside for my most precious things. Here's how to make it. Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Hidden Pocket Crochet Scarf, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. This seemingly simple scarf hides a hidden pocket inside where you can keep your most valuable items right to hand. To make this pattern, I used two colors of Bernat Sheepy and a bit of Bernat Roving, which will make the secret pocket that you'll see later. Because we use two different yarns of different sizes, we need two different hooks. When crocheting with the Sheepy, I used the USL 8mm crochet hook, and when crocheting with the Roving, I used a J six millimeter crochet hook. To make this pattern, we'll also need our standard crochet supplies of scissors, stitch markers, and a yarn needle. And for this one, you'll also want to have a tape measure. As you can see here on our scarf, we do have a bit of collar blocking. I went ahead and added some bunny brown to our cottontail white here to add a little bit more interest. But you can, of course, stick with just white throughout, in which case you'll need two skeins of it. Otherwise, we just need one for the white and only about half of one, probably a little bit less here for the bunny brown. You can follow the same color scheme, add more stripes if you've got some leftover odds and ends of sheepy to use up. Really, this is an opportunity to make it your own, but it is very simple. It's simply 12 stitches across, and because it is so difficult to see individual stitches or rows with this yarn, we're going to crochet to measurement. So I want you to count your stitches in every row as you're going. It's only 12, so that makes it quite easy. Count your stitches every row, and then you won't get off widthwise, and then just crochet to different measurements, which I'll give you here in a moment. Now this pattern, because it does use two different yarns, one yarn for the scarf and another yarn for the hidden pocket, also does use two different hook sizes. When you're using the Bernat Sheepy, you want the larger hook size, which is the eight millimeter. For this one, we are going to go ahead and put a slip knot on our hook. And then we're going to start with a chain of 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, get that one through there, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So now what we want to do is crochet back into those stitches, skipping the stitch closest to our hook, skipping that chain closest to our hook, I should say, that's our turning chain, and then single crochet in each of the remaining chains. Now, that said, I don't know about you, but it's pretty hard to see the chain in here, right? That is the benefit of this yarn and that it creates this beautiful fuzzy fabric, but it also does make it a little bit more difficult. So what I want you to do for this pattern is not stress it. What we're going to do is just eyeball it and we're going to use our counting. We are going to attempt to get into each one of these chains and we're going to attempt to do it under one or two strands of the yarn. It really is not going to matter. So don't stress about which part of the chain you're working into. Just kind of try and hold it out straight-ish as you crochet into it. You can see it twisting a little bit there. You can untwist it as you go. But really, we're just going to kind of feel for our stitches and hope for the best and make sure to do our counting. So I can see by the size of my hook that it's about a pinch width here per stitch. So I can say, okay, I can feel that's my turning chain. So then I'm going to come down to the next chain right here. I can feel where it is just because there's a little lump between the two stitches. There's another lump. So I know there's a stitch right here, a chain. So I'm just going to put my hook right in there. I don't know exactly which part of the chain I'm working into, but I don't think you can tell. So then we just kind of feel for the next chain and we can see visually about how wide a stitch is. So there should be another one right about here. Put our hook in and it goes right through the fabric. So that's two. We're going to keep going and just Push the hook through, three. You can kind of straighten that out as you go here. We'll get in there somewhere, four. Again, can't really tell what part of the chain I'm working into, right? We've got four single crochets because we've been counting them. That's the only way we know. So we're going to keep going here. There's five and six and seven 
And I can tell I'm working into different parts of the chain here, but not visually, just because I can kind of feel as I go. But it's fine. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. And we've got just enough left down here. Stick our hook in there. I think. There we go. That last one tightened up a little bit, so we'll get our hook in there and make our 12th stitch. So now we've finished row one. There we go. So it's that simple. Row one is simply chain 13 and then skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across. Row two and the whole rest of the scarf until we make that hidden pocket are all going to be the same. We only change colors when we went to change colors or if you want to make it exactly like the one shown when it's called for in the pattern. Row two and all the rest of the rows of the scarf begin with a chain one or and then turn or turn and chain one, whichever you prefer, and then single crochet in each of those stitches. Now, with a row made, it's a little easier. You can keep this straight and flat. We don't want to let this twist anymore, so we do want to kind of use our hands to straighten it out as we go and still have our chain one, but now it's a little easier too to feel where each one of those stitches are, and we want to make sure to count every row. So one feel for that next little indentation there where you can feel the hole, two, three, four, five, because we can't really see our stitches, it is so important just to count as best we can here. Six, should be about halfway across, looks good. Seven, eight, nine, ten, pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein, eleven, and we're at the end, so we put in one more, twelve. There we go. So now we've got twelve stitches again. Now I've noticed that when I crochet with this yarn, it really kind of wants to pull in this way, but what I like to do is just give it a little tug after every row, and that seems to straighten it right out. We're just going to continue repeating just what we did for row two, chain one and single crochet across, chain one and single crochet across to length. So on our finished scarf, we start with row one in our color A, whichever color you want to use, and then we crochet simply in those rows, 12 single crochets each until we've reached approximately 40 inches. Then we add our second color. Here I use the bunny brown. And after that, it was about 14 more inches, so it took us to about 54 inches. It's a scarf, so come as close as you can. It might not land exactly, but you can decide do you want it a little longer or a little bit shorter. Then I went back to color A for just three more inches or so. Took it to about 57 inches total. If you like your scarf a little bit longer, you can absolutely add more length. If you like it shorter, take away a few rows instead. After you finished making the scarf portion, we need to make the little pocket that's going to be hidden inside. For this, we're going to be using our Bernat roving and our smaller hook. This is a USJ six millimeter. So we want to actually leave a long tail. These are gonna come in handy later. So we wanna leave a bit of a long tail, maybe we'll say 18 inches or so before we put our slip knot into the roving. The reason I chose roving, well, several reasons, but one of the reasons is it's got this great roving look and feel to it that really helps fill in the gaps and will make a really nice solid fabric pouch. So to begin the pouch, we're going to start again with a chain of 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And row one is exactly the same. Skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across. Of course, the great thing is now we can see our stitches so that makes it quite a bit easier. We don't have to worry as much about counting them, but we still wanna maintain 12 single crochets in each row across as we make this pouch. However, while it starts the same and it's the same number of stitches, we are going to work the remaining rows a little bit differently. So I'll see you when we get to the end of row one. So here's what your little hidden pocket should look like after row one. Rows two through eight are going to be a little bit different. We're going to chain one 
And now we are going to front loop only single crochet in each stitch across. By working in the front loop only in turned rows like we have here, you can see how that front loop is a little higher than the back loop. This helps create a much more flowy and drapey fabric. In other words, a little bit thinner fabric. And because we're using single crochet, that keeps it nice and solid. We want our pocket to be as thin as possible, but also a nice, like I say, solid fabric. So let's go ahead. We've got our chain one here and we've turned. We're going to go under just that front loop. So when we look at the tops of our stitches, the front loop is the one closest to us and the back loop is the one that's furthest away. So we want to go under just that front loop coming up with our hook in the middle of the stitch. Other than that, it's simply single crochet across. So front loop only, single crochet in each stitch across for rows two through eight. Then we'll come to row nine, which is a little bit different again. Okay, so after making row two, you can see how working in from this side, what is the front loop only, creates a little ridge right there. So we want to, as I say, continue working in the front loop only through row eight. Then when we come to row nine, it's going to be the center of the pouch or rather the fold at the bottom of the pouch. So what we want to do then is work in the back loop only. So for row nine, after we've chained one and turned, we're going to go right through the center of the stitch there so that we can go under just the back loop of each stitch. What this is going to do is force this row and the subsequent rows to fold back a little bit. It's going to create a really nice fold at the bottom of our pouch. So simply back loop only, single crochet across for row nine, and then continue your pouch for rows 10 through 16 with single crochets through the front loop only to mimic the other side. So here we have the pouch after it's been finished crocheting. We still need to add our zipper and seam up the sides, but you can see the stitches here. You can see all those lines left from the front loop only, and you can see why how working here in that back loop only for row nine really makes the fabric want to fold right on over to make our pouch. So again, that should be 12 stitches wide and a total of 18 rows. So we've left our long tails here, and we've got the top of our pouch to deal with as well. So now you're going to take your long tails and simply use a yarn needle to whip stitch the sides of these closed. However, before you do that, you want to sew in your zipper following the zipper manufacturer instructions. Now we're going to need to measure out where we're going to put our pouch, where we're going to put the fold in our scarf, and where we're going to put our seam. So measuring from row one, you want to measure in 18 inches, right about there. You can see I've put a stitch marker right there. That's going to be where our pouch is going to fold over and meet, or rather the keyhole, I should say, for our scarf. This will fold over and make the sleeve that the other end of the scarf will fit through. So I have marked out that 18, and I've also marked out nine. This is sort of that fold point right there where I'm going to be folding it over to make that sleeve. Now with those stitch markers right there, one and two, I can center where I'm going to sew my pouch. I haven't finished this one yet. I'll finish that up here before we come back again. But after you have your pouch all put together, you want to center it between the 18 inch mark and the nine inch mark, because this will be the fold that comes over and creates the sleeve. That hook really wanted to be part of this video. So that will create the fold that folds over and creates the sleeve that the other end of the scarf goes through and will have your pouch hidden right inside. And now I've finished my pouch. I installed a zipper. I just sewed it right along the first and last rows of the pouch. And then I took those long tails and simply whip stitched through both of the sides, but I left them attached so we can use them to attach our pouch to our scarf. So I like the idea of having the zipper open so that when I'm wearing the scarf, it zips up as opposed to down. This would be towards the floor. So that's the way I'm going to position my pouch. If you'd think you'd like it the other way, it doesn't really matter. It's however you'd like to do it. So then we want to make sure it's centered in between those two stitch markers, the one at the nine inch mark and the one at the 18 inch mark. You can just do this visually or you can measure it out if you like. Once that's in place, you can use those remaining long ends to whip stitch right into the sheepy fabric. Let's go ahead and take a few of those stitches together. Okay, so I've put one end of my yarn here on my yarn needle and we're ready to sew it in. Now, I want to make sure that I don't go all the way through the fabric because even though I've made sure I've got really similar colors here, I still don't want this yarn to show on the outside of the scarf. And behind the scarf, uh, behind the pouch rather here is the portion that will be facing out to the world. So. 
Again, make sure it's nicely centered. You can use some stitch markers if you like to tack that down. And then we're just going to whip stitch it to the fabric. And as I do that, I want to make sure that I get my needle under just sort of a loop of the sheepy, not all the way through it. So you can actually flip the fabric over if you need to, to double check. And I like to use my thumb or other fingers underneath the fabric to kind of feel for that too. So I'm just going to take my time here and make sure I get kind of a loop. Kind of have to guess with this fuzzy yarn, it's so thick. There we go, finally grabbed some of the actual fabric there. Then we're going to go just right through the edge of our pouch and whip stitch it. So that means we just go right through, find that next loop of the yarn, the sheepy here, and then go through right along the edge of your pouch and just move your way right on up. Now, it, you can sew this down as much or as little as you'd like. You can go around just the sides and the bottom. You can go around all four sides if you like. Just make sure that if you do decide to sew along the top, you'll want to make sure to open the pouch and only sew along that inside edge. Make sure it's open while you do that so you can get it open and you don't end up sewing the whole thing closed. But otherwise, just work your way around, weave in your ends, and then I'll see you when it's time for our final seam. Now, I've just finished sewing in my pouch and I just need to weave in this last end. But before I do that, I wanted to give a quick tip on this yarn. Roving yarn is, by its nature, kind of weak. You can see how it's not really plied. It's almost like yarn in its raw form. As such, it's very easy to accidentally tear. And when you're doing some sewing back and forth and pulling through fabric, it's very easy to have it try to come apart or to start to thin out in places. So what I like to do when I'm sewing with this yarn in particular is not only take my time and really gently pull through, but also, especially if it starts to get a little bit weak, I look for the spin that is there. There's just the faintest bit of a spin already in there. And then I will try and match that. And I will just go ahead and spin it right on the needle. You can see how that thins out the yarn a bit. It's putting the ply into it, so to speak, or a twist more than a ply, I should say. But what it does is it makes it a lot stronger. So if you just spin it a little bit and then sew with it, it'll make it quite a bit easier. So now we've sewn in our pouch and we're ready for our final seam. All we need to do is fold it at that nine inch mark so that it meets at the 18 inch mark. Now, if you left a long tail at the beginning of your scarf, you can use that end to sew this seam together, or we can simply cut a new length of yarn. So since we're using the same yarn now to sew with, we don't have to worry as much about going all the way through the fabric, but we still want it to look really nice and, well, basically sort of seamless, even though we're putting in a seam. So I'm going to start my yarn from underneath the flap here and just pull it most of the way through. And I'm going to leave this tail end here that I'll need to weave in as usual when I'm all done. Then I'm simply going to, kind of keeping that stitch marker there in mind, start whip stitching through this edge now, the same way that I did that pouch. I will pick up a strand or two from underneath here. And if it does end up going all the way through, it's not gonna be too bad because it's the same yarn. But I just want to work my way across whip stitching this whole seam right here. Pull that little tail end out of the way. And we can work our way all the way across. If you wanted to use stitch markers to kind of line this up, you can, or you can just kind of eyeball it. I'd like to take this stitch marker here that I was using to mark that space with and just grab the other end here. And now it's all held together. So that'll, that will get me halfway across. I can take that out and finish up that seam. Then all we need to do is weave in our ends. So now I've sewn that seam and from the outside, it's nearly invisible. And we have our sleeve here. So if you look inside, we can go ahead and take that stitch marker out now. We're done with that guy too. We have our little pouch right here for all our secret things. Just the right size for cards, keys, a little bit of cash. You can open it right up and stash whatever you need inside. And let me show you how to wear it. So now let's put on our hidden pocket crochet scarf. The first thing I want to do is find the hidden pocket and make sure that it's on the part of the loop furthest away from me. Then I'm going to hold that in one hand, simply wrap the scarf around my neck, just like I would any other scarf, and I can send the end right through that loop we made with our seam, just like that. And now I can adjust it. Do I want it a little looser? Do I want it extra tight and cozy? It just depends on the weather. But either way, whenever I need those precious items, I know I can just pull open that loop and find my zipper and all my stuff right there. And that's how to crochet the Hidden Pocket Crochet Scarf. 
Once again, you'll find the free written pattern with all of the details on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.